Hi campers, welcome back to the Westbury Art Summer Program. We are now in week six of the program. Uh, this will be our last week together, unfortunately, but uh, I have a really cool lesson for you today. Uh, today we're going to be studying the art, the, the art of uh, a Lebanese artist named Salwa Rayoda Shukler. And she has been making work for basically her entire life. She was born in 1916. She unfortunately passed a few years ago, but her work is still with us today. And uh, it's really amazing work, and the inspiration for her work is, is amazing as well. Uh, yeah, and I can't wait to get into that. But first, we need to go over the materials. Uh, so for today, you're going to be needing your white sheets of paper, uh, preferably watercolor paper. But if you have just regular uh, sheets of white paper, that's totally fine. You're also going to need um, your watercolor set. If you don't have your watercolor set, that's fine. You can just use your markers for this assignment. Uh, if you do have your watercolor set, you're going to need a cup of water. You're also going to need your, a paper towel just to uh, dry your brushes. If you don't have a paper towel, a cloth is fine as well. You're going to need your pencils. You're also going to be needing, let's see, actually, that is it. <laughs> you're, that's all you're going to be needing today for uh, for this assignment. It is going to be a pretty easy assignment, but the lesson is, is going to be a little more complicated. So, so yeah, I can't wait to start. So, uh, yeah, let's get started. Shuker is a Lebanese artist who started creating work at the age of eight in her school, designing posters and helping other students with her their own art. When she was 20 years old, in 1936, she got a college degree in natural sciences, though her interest in the art would remain strong. In 1942, during World War II, she visited Cairo, Egypt, and Africa. As she explored the city, she was really inspired by Islamic art and architecture, and this would go on to influence her paintings and push her to take on sculpture. These are a few examples of her work. The religion of Islam and the art that falls under it is characterized by mathematics, writings, and science to depict divinity and spirituality. This would set the basis for her work, where other religious art uses actual people. Islamic art tends to stay away from such depictions. We can find that Islamic art may include elements of vegetation or floral designs to reflect the natural, divine world. Islamic art is very well known for the complex geometric designs too, specifically how they can seem almost infinite. This also reflects divinity. This art form is used to decorate the interiors of mosques, the sites of worship for Muslims or followers of Islam. Architecture was another way to explore and express divinity. Lastly, calligraphy is an important aspect of Islamic art because it involves the use of the Arabic language and sacred scriptures. We can often see that words are suddenly transformed to create really complex designs and ornamentations. Here we can see how uh, the calligraphy lines the, the interior of the mosque. What we're seeing right now is called a mirab, which is a niche on a wall used to denote which direction one should pray towards. We see all of the elements we covered earlier joining to form an elaborate work of art. There's the calligraphy, the geometric and vegetal designs, and the purposeful architecture. Here we can see more examples of how calligraphy was applied to things like books and eventually things like pottery. Furthermore, as we study the patterns created using geometry, we can see how everything has a sort of circular design to it, and it all converges to a point. Notice also the beautiful and elaborate colors applied to these tiles and the effort that must have been put into creating these tiles by hand. And now that we understand Shuclair's inspiration, we can see it reflected in her work. It's important to mention that she was also influenced by the abstract art movement in Europe, and she would take these elements with her back to Lebanon where she would pioneer the abstract art movement in Lebanon. It would not be an easy time in Lebanon though, during the 1970s and many years after, Lebanon would be the site of a civil war. Miraculously, Shuclair managed to avoid and at last some of the worst moments in those years. One of her paintings documents this time. A bomb near her studio went off, sending pieces of glass into the painting itself. Her work would go on to showcase in the UK at the Tate Museum. Though she's no longer with us, her work reminds us constantly of her uniqueness and her desire to create work that spoke to and spoke for the spirit, no matter the circumstances. Art is innate, she said. Art is a natural part of our existence, of our being. So how will we use art now and in the future? If it has the power to express ideas we can, that we can't express any other way, why not keep it forever? And so now that we have a good understanding of Shuclair, let's move on to our very final project. 
Okay, to start off, you're going to take your white sheet of paper, and then you're just going to start uh, drawing shapes, preferably uh, starting with the top left corner of the paper, just because I, I imagine it's a little more easier that way. But you're going to start connecting these shapes and uh, try to make them robust. Try to make them um, different, wacky, uh, not the same. Try to make each shape its own unique uh, individual shape. So when you're finished making your shapes with your pencils, you're going to start coloring in each shape with its own unique color. And at this point, if you have your watercolors and if you're drawing on top of watercolor paper, you can start uh, using watercolor to fill in these colors. Um, but if you are just using regular paper and say you only have your markers, you can go right ahead and start coloring it in. Another thing that I wanted to add is as you fill in the shapes, try to jump around the page and, and not, not color it in as if you're trying to cover uh, one large area at a time. Try to jump between shapes just to see how the colors uh, interact with each other. Another reason for doing this is because say you do start your watercoloring, another reason to do this is because as you're, as you're using watercolor, if you're using watercolor, some of the colors might bleed into each other and you might not want that. Uh, you don't have to worry about that if you're using markers, of course. But it doesn't matter. At the, end of, at the end of the day, I really just want you to have fun with these colors and really play around with uh, the harmony involved in, in creating these sort of paintings. One thing that I want you all to consider is using a limited color palette for your paintings. And what that means is uh, choosing, say, two colors. Uh, in this case, it could be uh, blue and orange and trying to use colors that match uh, blue and orange. So if you're going to be using blue and orange, try to use like, um, let's see, like a light blue or a light orange. Or if it is orange, try to use like a, like a, like a red orange. Um, something, something that tells us that these colors are basically related to each other, just so that the piece looks a little more cohesive and a little more harmonious. You do not have to uh, go with a limited color palette, of course. You definitely have as much freedom as you want when it comes to these paintings. Uh, if you want, you could definitely just uh, look through some of uh, Shuker, Shuker's work and just feel inspired by some of the colors that she chose. In the end, I expect a full painting with an arrangement of color and shapes inspired by the work of Shuker. So thank you for joining me campers. Uh, this is the last lesson of the art program. I really hope you enjoyed it. I really hope you enjoyed the, the program overall and um, I hope you learned something. I hope, I hope you learned about an artist that you might want to look into later. Uh, just remember that art is innate. It's a, it's a part of who we are. It's a part of how we, we can express ourselves. And I hope you take it with you as the years progress. Uh, be safe. Be blessed. Be healthy. I will miss you all. And uh, take care.